Hello, Floss Tube. Welcome back to my fourth video. I can't believe I've stuck with it for four whole uh, episodes or videos. I look like I'm some producer, TV producer. Anyway, <laughs> hello, welcome back. Happy day before February 14th. Um, if you celebrate Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. If you don't celebrate Valentine's Day, well, I get you. Um, I have to because I teach kindergarten, so the kids are looking forward to it. They have all their little Valentines ready to pass out, and I'm ready to see them um, play postal worker and pass out their little Valentines tomorrow, so that should be fun. I have a lot of things today. A lot of them are things that I have had for a while that I need to finish. I'm trying to catch up on a lot of different projects that I've had in the works. Um, a lot of whips that need to be finished and sadly some of them are very embarrassing because they've been whips for a long, long time. There's some, some cross stitching, some quilting, some little sewing things all thrown in the mix. So not a whole lot of cross stitching today, but I do have an FFO for cross stitching that is um, pretty exciting. I'm excited about it. Finally finishing it and finishing it all the way through. Uh, it is my Nevermore. Here's the chart, and I'm sure we've y'all have seen this. Lizzie Kate, so cute. And so I finished it. I decided to finish it as a little small. And so this is what I have decided that it's going to end up like. And I just, it really all kind of just came together. I debated on putting some ruffle trim around the edge and, or I just thought that looked a little too busy. I was going to put rickrack around the edge of it, but I think this worked. Um, next time, I will use Vonna's tutorial to have the slit in the back and stuff it through the back. Because if you don't have um, the opening... Well, if you have the opening in the bottom, it tends to bunch. So I think I did an okay job. It's not the best job I could have done. I have made pillows in the past, but I didn't have the right stuffing. And I was kind of in the mood of use what I have. I want to use up the, so I had old quilt batting. I had polyfill. I didn't have the stuff that she uses that she rec recommends in her videos. But I think it worked. Um, I mean, it, it worked for me. I like it. It's a, I got this little trim at Michael's had this button, had this ribbon. I just had this, I only had this six inch little piece of ribbon and I made it work. So this was in my stash. So I thought it turned out really cute. Very cute little pillow. Uh, and my son is like, what good is that pillow? You can't even lay on it. I'm like, you lay your head on my pillow, we're gonna have some problems. <laughs> Keep your head off my pillow. Um, but anyway, cute. I also have um, to ask some advice, I talked a couple of videos ago about how I've been cross-stitching off and on for years. Um, I started when I was probably 13 or 14 and maybe younger than that. My uh, sister taught me how to cross-stitch. And so I did a lot of Christmas ornaments and we talked about, I talked about how I've had kits and that's all I've ever known is just kits before last October when I started really delving into the whole cross stitch world. Um, so I found, I was in the attic the other day looking for a quilting book and I found a bunch of my old cross stitch uh, ornaments. In a, when my father passed away, we cleaned out his home and um, I got a bunch of the ornaments that I made out of the Christmas box. And so a lot of them have seen better days. I, I would like some advice though if anybody knows how I can clean them because they have yellowed over the time. I mean, some of these are dated and you'll see they're dated, um, but they have not held up very well. And of course I didn't take very good care of them. They just all got thrown in a cardboard box and they've been in the attic um, six, seven years now. So there are a lot of just little, this one, and I was pretty good back then. I mean, really, I don't know. Those corners are crazy, but I stuffed this little sucker in just a little ornament. And it even has my initials um, before I got married. And there's little, this one. 
1990 called they want their framing back but anyway I well you know it's cute look there what is that oh that's tape <laughs> this one with this nice gold frame Whew. little nutcracker with the lace oh goodness I would really love to little mouse look at that it has an old, old ornament hook on it I mean you know these are old this must be the oldest one. Little cat. Look at my beading skills. Look out. This one has lost its frame. It was one of one of these houses. Um, and then the well, last one is this cute little nutcracker. I have a thing for nutcrackers. I had a thing for them back then. This one's pretty cute. But these are 25-ish or more years old. And so they have some they have yellowed over time so if anybody has any advice that I can save these little things uh, maybe get the stains off of them I thought about just tea dyeing it and calling it done but I don't know if that's gonna work either can I soak it I want to reframe them at, at, of course better than these no offense to people who like these it's just not my doesn't match my decor so anyway help me help these little things if you know any way to get the yellow staining out that would be very helpful what else oh i have another um finish it's not fully finished it's just a cute little for easter you can see right through that i love this fabric it's um is it ada linen i don't know even we no idea there there we go is that cute little bunny with some flowers and this you will be so proud this little butterfly is one over one look at that butterfly never done one over one before all the rest is um, two over two so I was pretty proud of myself this is 28 count I <laughs> We talked I don't know I have a lot of people tell me that I need to go get some glasses from the drugstore and I'll be able to see those tiny holes I'm gonna have to try that to do 32 count because my eyes just cannot see those holes and then I second guess myself and I'm not sure whether it's a hole I'm seeing or I'm making one so I'm working on it um I've been making a bunch of yo-yos I don't know it's addictive if you've never made a yo-yo you need to uh, they can you can use them to embellish your projects I almost put some yo-yos on the nevermore pillow but I thought it might kind of add too much whimsy to it but look how cute you just make your little yo-yo and you put your button on top and is that adorable it's a sickness I've got more and another one and some tiny ones but they're not completely done but you get yourself a clover yo-yo maker Right here and you can make some yo-yos I have they, I have they have them in different sizes I have the extra small and it shows you right here here is the size and all you do if you've never seen these before this is the tiny one but you sandwich your fabric between the disc and this piece sandwich the fabric in trim it a little bit around the edge of the circle and then you sew in and out, in and out, all the way around. Pop it off, pull the thread together, knot it, and you're done. It comes out like this. I'll show you close up, let's see. This is the teeny tiny one, but this is the way it comes out. And this is the back. And you just can throw a button on top of that, a tiny button, and you can layer them on top of each other adorable put your flower up there I mean how cute I'm here to enable you're welcome but anyway this is they have um, large they have extra small small I'm assuming I have three I'm assuming there's a medium uh, there might be an extra large I'm not sure I just have those three sizes because I find they're the most handy um, of all the sizes but I'm probably going to go out and get more because yo-yo making is addictive what else do I have? I have a another finish 
but it's a long ago finish. Somebody wanted to see, I don't remember who it was, but we talked about quilting and somebody wanted to see one of my finished quilts and I'm sad to say that I have one completely finished quilt that I'm still in possession of and that quilt is uh, belongs to my son. I made it for him when on his first birthday and um, it's an around the world quilt and I got it from his room so I could show you and it's back when the retro fabrics were coming back in. So it must have been, let's see, 2004? No, 2005. 2005, so this is the Around the World quilt that I made for my son, Owen. And I'm really proud of it. Um, I've quilted it and put binding on it all myself. Yeah, 9-2005. I've been put a little inscription on it. To Owen, happy first birthday, love mama. 9, 2005 and I bound look at this I even bound that little inscription thing it's just backed with blue flannel but really cute retro fabric so that's a quilt quilting long ago whip I have a whole I'm not whip finish I'm sorry I have a, a lot of whips quilting I want to finish those. That's the goal. That's why I'm bringing them out. And that's why I'm telling YouTube all about them. Floss tube. I want to finish these quilts that I have started. I've just been moving them from house to house. Um, I don't know. I, I think I, I want to get them finished because they've been haunt. You know, it's kind of haunting if you have things that you want to finish. I mean, if you don't want to finish it, that's a different story. But if you have things that you would like to finish, like Jack, my youngest son, his quilt is not finished. Um, so Owen's is. So I've got to get him a quilt now that he's 11. Uh, how embarrassing. But anyway, I Jack was going to have a Christmas quilt. And I started it probably 2007, 2008. And I never finished it. And I have part of it. Well, I think I have all the pieces. But my problem is I don't know where the pattern is. So I'm going to show you this quilt, and if you've ever seen it, please alert me as to where the pattern might be. I'm not sure what I did with it. I don't know if it was one in the quilting shop that I was using, because when I was quilting a long time ago, we had quilting classes at um, a quilt shop, and the they changed owners, and they kind of kicked our quilting teacher out. She was an amazing quilting teacher. She taught me everything I ever needed to know about quilting, and then some... Uh, but so she, they kind of kicked her out and the new owner took over and there was some bad blood there. And so anyway, I'm not sure, but I'm going to finish this quilt, whether I have to make it up on my own or not. It's a Christmas quilt. And I remember at the bottom of the quilt, it was supposed to have not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse or some kind of embroidery of a Christmas up on the housetop, I'm not sure. I'll show you what the quilt looks like. This is the top portion of the pattern. And I had to piece this, to, and it's not all completely quilted, but it's there's still some needles in it. But this is the sky and the snow. These are the house blocks. So I remember picking out like the brick for the outside. And of course, this is the inside window. There's another window. There's another one and one, another house here. And this is the bottom. Now, that's where it kind of goes south because I'm not sure what goes at the bottom. I made the, I made these, they're not finished, they're still pinned, but these go in there somewhere. And of course this is going to be, that's the, bottom section. I'm not sure. I have all these pieces. You ever done that? You ever have a project and you completely lost what it's supposed to be? That's embarrassing too. Anyway, all these pieces are quilted. They just need to be put on the bottom and I'm not sure how they go. 
But I do remember there was some kind, because I remember fretting about how I was going to do that. Was I going to embroider it uh, myself in my own handwriting? Was I going to stencil it and then embroider it? And there was some kind of Christmas verse at the bottom of that quilt. And so I need to find the pattern. So that's a problem that I have right now. And I'm going to solve it. Uh, so if you've seen that quilt pattern anywhere, let me know. Um, I think, well, I have a little bit of haul, just a tiny bit. And, of course, I got some cross-stitch fabric from my 2 3 stitch because we discussed in earlier videos how I'd only stitched on Ada, um, only at Hobby Lobby or Joann's if they carried it. That's what I had. Uh, I did my Forest Snowfall on the fabric that they sent with it when I ordered. Uh, but other than that, it's been cross-stitch fabric we could buy at the local box stores. So I ordered some fabric from 123Stitch. I ordered, 20. of course it's 28 count, because we know I can't see, um, 28 count Jobelin, Jobelin in red and black. And then I also ordered some cream Lugana. So I plan on stitching on these and seeing how it goes from there. But I know this is not terribly exciting. A lot of people have a whole bunch of, uh, let me go pull from my stash. Well, now I can say that because I've got three pieces of fabric. <laughs> but anyway, that's a start. It's a start. Uh, what else? Two things I want to get started on. Um, the first one is the Heartstring Samplery. This one's right up my alley because it has those muted colors that I love, but it also has a verse that really speaks to me. And it's the, when I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of sheep. And I really need to learn to do that. Let go and let God. Um, I worry far too much and my husband would probably agree. But I have all of the classic color works in red clay, peanut brittle, all the colors. And I'm going to decide. I'm thinking probably going to go with this maybe tea coffee dye, my fabric. It's not too... I like it against the, the cream, so I'm thinking I'm going to just go with it because we know I can always do it after the fact with some stamp pads that I have because why not? One more thing I picked up. I really love Charles Wysocki and I put together his puzzles. Love, I love to put together puzzles, but I put together his puzzles and I did not know. I've been under a rock, I'm telling you. So I'm sorry if y'all know all this stuff. I didn't know he had cross stitch patterns and I know this one's old, but I love it. I just love it. And this kit comes with the fabric. Now I'll probably change the fabric out because um, nothing against, uh, what is it? It's stitched on what? 14 count Ada, nothing against that. I stitched on that for years and years, but I'm really liking the 28 count two over two, so I might just stitch it on 28, but that is adorable. I can't wait, I mean, all these little, oh, look at that little girl, getting some nuts, I mean, seriously, in that little wagon. It's all the little parts that keep you keeping on. I mean, it's just like puzzles, just like putting together a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle. You wanna get to that next part. One last thing is a whip embarrassing again. I've been, I've been embarrassed this whole video. Back when my son was probably five or six, he really liked frogs. So I found this frog pattern again, Hobby Lobby. And I remember thinking I was going to try to get all of them because aren't they cute? And I'll do it, you know, in his bedroom, but time it gets away from you. But I have this part finished. So that's another thing that I want to do. I think I got, yeah, the frog is finished. All that's left is the border and the red and orange. And I think that's when I decided just to stop 
life kind of kind of got in the way. So that's my goal. My goal is to finish some things that I started. And if you don't love it, don't stitch it. But I kind of do. I like the little frog. So we'll see. But I do know that um, I want to clean up these ornaments that I have had and maybe finish them in the way that they come into this century and don't look so old and dated, but I think they're still cute. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. I have been um, enjoying all of the floss tube videos. I really like um, seeing what you're doing. So keep it up uh, so I have something to watch. I'll see you later. Till next time. Bye.